The world's premier stand-up combat league made its return to France for the first time in 2019, where the best stand-up combat talent in the world was on display for Glory 64 at the Rennes Sport Arena in Strasbourg. It was an action-packed night filled with top-ranked fighters from across Glory 7 weight divisions, featuring key bouts with title implications. On this edition of Glory Rewind, current and former champions collide for the Glory Super Bantamweight World title between Anissa Mexen and Tiffany Van Soost, and for the Welterweight World title between Cedric Dumbe and Haruk Gregorian. Also top action in the featherweight, welterweight, and heavyweight divisions on display. We'll recap it all on Glory 64 Rewind, which starts right now. We start in the Super Fight Series that showcased top talent from the featherweights all the way up to the heavyweights, along with an electrifying welterweight title contender fight between Myrtle Grunhart and Aleem Naviev. But it was the heavyweights and middleweights that put it all on the line with two devastating knockout wins. Let's take a look at these two knockdowns. We start with the first jump. Yeah, you can see, very patient, walked in, fanned a nice right hand. You can see every time that Pena has opened up, his hands slightly left his head, and we see good timing with that straight right. And the second one, that straight right was landing to the head, and that's where Risa did a good job at changing levels, and boom, straight right to the body. And you can see right away the look on Pena's face that he wasn't going to get up from that one. Right on the solar plexus. So two-thirds of Donovan Visa's wins have come by knockout. He is a man to be feared in the middleweight division. We next turn our attention to the heavyweights and pick it up in round three between D'Angelo Marshall and Daniel Scavore. This is the fight that Marshall on paper should have won or should win. So this would be a devastating loss to his career. Yeah, Scavore is definitely a big Whoa, underdog. That right hand may have hurt Scavore, and then an uppercut grazes the face again, and Scavore back it up, hands are down. Bad place to be against Big Papa. Oh, and another Whoa. uppercut. Right. Yeah, he has taken, I'm sorry, Joe, he has taken Fight. some massive shots. Yeah, you can see all that weight behind oh, his punches. And a, knee, and a right hand. Score looks like he's ready to go. D'Angelo Marshall's waking up now. Good toughness from Score. Oh, oh, big, big shot oh. by Big, Big Papa, and it's over. A lightning quick bomb from D'Angelo Marshall, and that's all. Just as you thought he was starting to fatigue, his hands were dropping. He found that late energy in that third round to get that beautiful finish. And now the doctor will check on Daniel Spore. And I tell you what, the courage and heart he showed in a losing effort won't soon be forgotten. And I know Marshall respects it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Spore did amazing in those first two rounds, but you got to think the weight, the size, and the power that D'Angelo Marshall has. He took a lot of them, but it was ultimately that last shot here. He was really aiming for those uppercuts. That hurt him there. And then Big Papa, very, very patient, boom, came over with that right hand. No coming up from that. Just sets it up perfectly off of the jab. Timber. Time now, ladies and gentlemen, for the featherweights and about scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Push back. Judge. There's judge, the Goliath judge. ringside coming off that eight-man heavyweight tournament win. Fight! The number one heavyweight contender in the world today. You know he wants Rico Verhoeven next. But right now he's content to sit and watch what should be a good one between Asbiri in the white gloves and Boy Nazarov in the black. Which is round four for these guys so they know each other. Let's see what adaptations they made. Do you think Boy Nazarov can win on points or does he need the KO? Well, knowing how Esbiri is, he's really good volume striker. So he's either got to match the pace or rely on his power. 
but you can see that length as Bury wants to hit and move. He doesn't want to stay in the pocket. Oh, he tried that spinning back kick, the one that put Victor Pinto down. It just misses. Good combination. Nice start for Esbiri, but we saw in the Fabio Pinka fight, it only takes one shot from the Uzbek. Yeah, he's going to constantly walk forward, use his strong defense, which he developed through that those 122 Muay Thai fights. He's going to walk you down and counter. Nice low kick there from Nazarov. Boy, Nazarov still living in Thailand. As Beery burst onto the scene back at Glory 47, winning a featherweight contender tournament, two fights in one night. And he came into that tournament as a big underdog in a straight right hand since Boy Nazarov sprawling back against the ropes. You don't think about as Beery having a lot of hand power, but he showed differently there. Volume and movement approach so far as Beery's doing well. Boy Nazarov was just seconds away from becoming a featherweight interim world champion when he put Kevin Van Ostrand on the canvas, only for Van Ostrand to get up and land a brutal knee that sent Boy Nazarov down and out. Yeah, he was on his way to a title shot. And I know he's mo more motivated than ever to get it. And this is what Boy Nazarov wants, as Beery to stand in the pocket and let his hands go. Yeah, or jump into strikes like that where he can counter punch well. Boy Nazarov coming all the way from Thailand where he lives and trains. He's relying heavily on his punches. He's got to mix his kicks in. Good combo there from his Beery. Good opening round for the Frenchman. And right as oh, there, a right hand sends his period to the two, canvas. That'll three, be a count. Fade down the four, music. Five, six, seven, eight. Step to me. Six. That'll be the end of the round, but it was a round as Beery was winning, and then, like I said, it only takes one. Fight! Three minutes left for Beery to come back. Needs at least a knockdown here. Some interesting scores there. The 10-9 judge, not sure what's going on there. It was a knockdown that is an automatic point deduction, is it not? Absolutely. Let's see how Boy Nazarov takes this third round. Does he stay patient or does he still go for it? The one judge who scored at 9-9 obviously deducted a point, but then felt that overall, in totality, as Beery won the round, so gave him nine and scored at 10 points for Espiri. Yeah, but with scoring, you can't lose the round with a knockdown. So Break. that's the first Break. scoring criteria. Nevertheless, as Beery still has a shot here. Good check from Boy Nazarov. Great. This may turn into one of those trilogy fights, Joe. Because yeah. you know as Beery feels like he's been done hard here in the second fight. That's a low kick. Is it a knockdown? Oh. Paul Nichols says no. As Beery, though, showing a lot of great conditioning here, Joe, to keep firing like this after being knocked down twice. Yeah, I want to see as Beery go to that right low kick. I don't know, is it Boy Nazarov's knee or... I know he didn't look too comfortable taking it. There's those flying knees Boy Nazarov likes. Considering how the scores are all over the place, if Esbiri can manage just a knockdown, I think he wins the fight. Easier said than done against Boy Nazarov. What a spirited display, though, by Esbiri. Yeah, absolutely, but that right low kick from Esbiri's doing well. 
Just to reiterate the point, as Beery has thrown 230 strikes compared to just 113 for the Uzbekistan fighter. Yeah, watch every time as Beery goes to the low kick. When Nazarov's not liking it. Probably won't do enough damage with 30 seconds left to get him what he wants, but still his best landing strike. Ooh, good switching stance and power from Boy Nazarov. Some spinning attack there from the Uzbek. A good round three for Asbiri. It was a good fight, a controversial fight. Here are the highlights, Joe, and a lot of controversy in this fight. Yeah, and it's as Beery really started well with his combinations and hitting and moving, knew how dangerous Boy Nazarov with his counter punches, but he ended up getting caught right at the end of the first round, which put as Beery having to come forward, that controversial knockdown there, which was very difficult to call, and round three. As Beery needed it, kept coming forward, mixing his combinations. But Anvor by Nazarov stayed really strong, tight defensively, kept coming forward. They had another moment again at the end of this fight. They score this bout 29-28, 29-26. And our three remaining judges all see the bout 29-27. A unanimous decision, all for your winner, Anvar by Nazarov. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your headline super fight of the evening. Three rounds in the welterweight division. Myrtle Grunhardt and Aleem Nadiev. Fight! So here we go. Three rounds in our main event here on the Super Fight Series. A world title opportunity most likely on the line. Grunhardt in the black gloves, Nadiev in the white. What are you looking for early here, Joe? Well, we're going to see... Nabiev really trying to switch stances, see how he's going to attack. I think we're going to see Myrtle really trying to pressure, try to get Nabiev against the ropes. But Good body kick from yeah, Ali. That's, a, that's one of my keys for Nabiev in this fight. Try to keep his range and let those kicks go. Let go. You see the three X's on the back of Grunhardt. Those are Amsterdam. For the signal for, sign for Amsterdam, the three X's. He's very proud of the city he comes from. This is a fight I almost wish was five rounds. Because very both really technical, really experienced. They might need a little bit more time to figure each other out. Good low kick there as Nabiev tried to spin away. Both almost have this unorthodox style to them. This is one of those fights that could be a barn burner or it could be just a technical bounce around, stick and move fight. I just think it's too dangerous for both guys to just open up. So we're going to see a little bit more patience, I feel, especially in the first two rounds. Right now, it's Naviev slowly stalking, having Myrtle move. Good combination work from Grunhardt. The only loss for Naviev came against Alim, or excuse me, the only loss for Alim Naviev came against the current champion, Haruk Gregorian, in a world title fight. Yeah, which most people thought he would have come out pretty easily on that fight. Break! Break! Oh, and Paul Nichols has lost his microphone. Okay. You good? Time in. Fight. Fight. 
Well, a fairly pedestrian round one, Joe. Nice knee there from Nabiev, though, as Grunhardt tries to swing his way out of things. Nabiev smiles as he got caught in the ropes. It's our main event from the Glory Super Fight Series. Myrtle Grunhardt, the third ranked welterweight in the world in the black gloves. Aleem Nabiev, number one, wearing white. Four of the five judges gave round two to the man from Azerbaijan. So it all comes down to the final three minutes. Joe, how would you describe what we've seen over the first two rounds? Well, I'm liking the, the constant pressure from Nabiev. But I do like when Myrtle gets on the attack. So I think in this third round, we need to see Myrtle come forward a little bit more, use his pressure style if he wants to steal this round. Nabiev stronger in round two after losing the first. The technical fight favors Nabiev because he can stay long, switch stances. So Myrtle needs to find his opportunity to come in and attack in combination. And I like when Myrtle's mixing his strikes, had some good success with his kicks. Nabiev has been warned sec oh. several times for throwing Myrtle to the canvas. Just I as I say that, he may have done it again. Yeah, in mid-throw, I think he realized that he was going to lose a point. He was going for a double leg takedown, but gently, gently. put Myrtle down. Here comes Myrtle. Spinning back fist, just missed for Nabiev. Glory scoring, spectacular offense, scores better, better than normal techniques. There's that better pressure from Myrtle. Close round three here. It's anybody's fight. The winner of this should and will certainly campaign for a world title opportunity. A lot on the line for a minute left. Nabiev quickly turning out of the corner. Nabiev trying to play peekaboo here with Grunhart, and it's working. The crowd showing their appreciation. And it looks good, Joe, but defense is not rewarded under Glory's point scoring system. No, if it comes down to aggression, because it's a close fight, Myrtle's coming forward. He's going after it. That scores. Let go! Close round three for sure. There's that hook. Left hook connects there for Myrtle. Yeah, Myrtle's pressure now with his hands is starting to look good. Oh, nice uppercut. And then a high kick there for Myrtle. This is going to be a very close round, Joe. It looked like Myrtle went after it a little bit more in this third round. Good finish, but who got the job done? Highlights now from a very close contest between Aleem Nabiev and Myrtle Grunhart. The judges gave the first round to Myrtle. Joe, you thought maybe Aleem had it. Yeah, I thought he had a slight edge, but again, really close. Round two, we saw a little bit more from Nabiev, kind of picked it up a little bit more where the judges gave round two to Nabiev because he had Myrtle hurt at one point, really went for the attack. So the judges gave that round, but Myrtle came back with some good head kicks. Round three, which was the one that really matters here, is one round apiece. We really saw Myrtle go after it, especially with his boxing. They score this bout 30-27, Grunhardt. 29-28, Naviev. And our three remaining judges also score the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Ali! When we return, we switch to the main card of Glory 64, when top light heavyweights Donaghy Abena and Michael Dute take to the ring to trade blows. Don't go anywhere. Glory 64 Rewind will be right back. Welcome back to Rewind. After a dominating debut at Glory 60 Leon, Donaghy Abena got the chance to face Glory veteran Michael Dute to prove his worth. 
We do have open Fight. scoring tonight, so you'll see the official judges' scores, but I can tell you strikes landed in that round, both men with 16. Two judges gave it to Abena, three to Michael Duke. Just waiting for that one big shot to land for either of these guys. And you know, they fought that first round like neither man was trying to win on points. They were just kind of waiting each other out. Yeah, both known for their power punching. You're seeing Duke trying to set things up. We've seen him jab, try to go to the body, use his low kicks. But Obane is just waiting, ready to let go. Duke thinks he might have hurt him a little bit. Abena with a clinch. Stop! Stop! It looks like there might be a slight cut Stop. under the right eye of Michael Duke. Perhaps that's why he's so much more aggressive now. Good level changes from Duke. That left hook is going to be the money punch for Duke. Keeps firing it. There it was again. Yeah, it's counter left hook, but. Abena just landed one. Counter right from Abena. First time we see Abena really attack the legs of Duke. Abena has some massive thighs. Oh, nice uppercut from Abena, but then the left hook lands. Abena's back against the ropes. Duke now walking forward. Let's see how Duke reacts here. Oh. Stop. Experienced move Stop. from Abena to tie up. Second time, no holding. Take down the set. Fight! Both men landing Stop. some heavy shots here Stop. in round two. Let him away. Fight. That cut is starting to open up. And it's in a good place and won't affect the fight, thankfully. Good body punch, but that leaves Jude open. No knockdown. Fight! That could have gone either way. Yeah, that was close. The judge ruling that Dude hadn't established his feet back underneath him there. Yeah, as you kick and someone power punches, you fall back like that. So it's really scary for, for the judges to make that quick call. Or the referee, rather. Yeah, the referee, sir. Tobias Gerald, really experienced. But it wasn't really a damaging Stop. shot because Duke Stop. popped right back Let up. Yeah, that's why you have Let to get up go. right away. Let him go. Show the ref you're good. Second warning for Abena for clinching. You took corner. It's okay. It's okay. Don't make it. Higher. Time in. Fight. Let's see how the judges saw that second round. Three giving it to Duke, two to Abena. So as we look now at the totals, Duke up two to one, but it could go either way now here in the third round. The statistics virtually identical. Possible title shot on the line for the winner here, or maybe it's Luis Tavares. There's a Bana now going to the kicks. Just missing with the right is a Bana. We're approaching the two minute mark here in the third and final round. That mid-range boxing is just so dangerous. You see them both open up every time. There could be a knockout every moment they crash the distance. Watch your head, guys. Watch your head. Not much behind those low kicks from Duke. Almost like a range finder. Yeah, he probably wants to set up his hands off of it. Lands there for Abena and then a left hook from Dute. The 
best two punches of the fight came in round two, about two seconds after each other. Yeah, the well, uppercut from Abena, the left hook from Duke. Yeah, more blood coming, is it from the nose of Duke now? Looks like some coming out of the mouth as well. He just spit some at Abena. Yeah, Abena looks fresh as the daisy. Duke looks like he's been in 12 rounds of fighting. Well, that hurt him. Never count Michael Dude out. No matter what time of the fight it is, Michael Dude will find something. As I mentioned, his last fight, he finished it with 10 seconds left. Can he get, can he do the same tonight? A rare body kick from Dude, 30 seconds to go. This may have been Dude's best round, but Abena right in the thick of it. With 14 seconds left, one big shot could tilt the favor of the judges behind you. There's a lot of blood now coming from Duke. Abena with the left uppercut. Boy, it can really go either way. Duke says he won it. Abena says he did. Michael Duke rarely in a boring fight, and he wasn't tonight either. No, never. And he was a little bit more patient than we've seen, but I like that. We got to see a little bit more of his experience. Jab, move around, kick the body, but Abena kept coming forward. He did a good job at landing his power shots. You saw him sit in there, take the best from Duke. Here he landed a good uppercut where Duke came back, but you can see that power that Abena has in his hands. For only being 21 years old, that's a lot of experience behind his back, but you can see those uppercuts and hooks they were landing. But right from the start to finish, when they got into that punch range, it was just so dangerous. Anybody could have went out at any time. We had Duke with a cut under his eye, blood coming out of his nose, and still coming forward trying to get the finish. They score this bout, 30-27, Dute. 30-27, Abena. 29-28, Dute. 29-28, Abena. And our fifth and final judge, score the bout 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Donaghy Abena! Next up, the Super Bantamweight title is on the line when the two best female kickboxers in the world step in to settle the score once and for all when Anissa Mexon defends her title against Tiffany Van Soos. That comes your way next on Glory 64 Rewind. Welcome back to Rewind. The first of two title fights at Glory 64 featured the much-anticipated rematch between former champion Tiffany Van Soos and current two-time champion Anissa Mexen. Back. Oh, Tiffany doesn't Judge. want to touch gloves. Judge. That's how serious she Judge. is. The Judge. former champ against Judge. the current Judge. champ Judge. for kickboxing Ready. supremacy Fight. and the super bantamweight division. Five championship rounds here from Strasbourg. First fight was really close. Both women landing the same amount of strikes, but it was Mexican using a little bit more volume and her kicks. So let's see how Van Seuss is gonna react, what the game plan is. Mexican said in the first fight she just wanted to win. On points was fine. This time she wants to destroy Tiffany, so there will be no calls for a trilogy. And if you see Mexican's last fight against Jadi Menezes, you know she has that ability to get really aggressive and get a finish. If this turns into a power punching and power kicking display, can Tiffany hang with Anissa? Absolutely. Tiffany's got some good hands, and we saw it when she fought Esma Hassas. Fighters being a little patient here in round Flick. one. They have five rounds to try to figure each other out. <laughs> Tiffany loaded up that right hand, didn't she? Yeah, and when she throws that right hand, you'll see her shift her stance a lot. She'll bring her back foot up, and that's how she gets some good power behind it. <laughs> Both of these women are lightning quick. Both have good distance control, good movement. Good. And you can see Van Seuss wanting to use feints. Oh, 
Oh, Whoa. nice kick from Van Soos. And then a body kick for Van Soos. Van Soos trained exclusively in Bali for this fight. Wanted to get away from everything, get focused in, no distractions. Good start to the round, though, for Van Soos. Maxton telling us she doesn't dislike Tiffany Van Soos. She just doesn't know her well enough to hate her and says, I like it that way. Hey. Low kick there from Maxton. That's checked. Yeah, Van Soos trying to use angles. Nice front kick. Look at Van Soos staring her down. Yeah, she wants to come forward. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Go for it. Van Seuss looks to be in phenomenal condition. Yeah, she's extra lean. You see that focus on her eyes. And she feels like she's got to do a little bit more that with this fight happening in France. She needs to make it decisive if she wants to win here. Let's see which way the judges scored that first round. All five giving the first round to Anissa Mexen. And Joe, that may be a little precursor of what stands in the way for Van Seuss winning tonight. Yeah, that's why Van Seuss was mentioning that she needs to do a lot to, to really get the win here. Good left hand there for Mexen. Van Seuss appear to be a little bit off balance, trying a spinning back fist. Van no Seuss needs to keep, keep up the same strategy she had in round one. She's doing well, mixing her kicks, pressure and angles. Now she's going to the body. Seuss's corner, wanting pressure from her. Tiffany won her world title in Germany, which is just across the border here. That spinning back fist was blocked by Mexen. She defeated another French fighter, Amel Deby, to claim the title. Not a lot separating There's these two. There's a high kick that just missed. Really good, evenly matched fight so far. Just like their first one. They went the distance in the first fight, all five rounds. Liking those front kicks from Tiffany. You have to like the creativity as well. Yep. But Maxine comes forward with her straight punches. And she blasts forward with them. That's how she got her finish in her last fight. Nice body work from Van Seuss. Listed as a southpaw, but she's fighting orthodox right now. Yep, she usually stays orthodox. You don't really see her go southpaw too much. Sometimes when you are stronger with the left hand, fighters prefer to use that as the jab hand. Yeah. But Max is really good with her straight punches, and she's got a really good exit left kick. Right is. hand running in there for Mexican. Nice left kick from Van Seuss, who also has a very good left kick. Ready, fight! We now enter the championship rounds here. Round four, scheduled for five, six minutes to go. All five giving that round to Mexen. Van Seuss needs a knockdown, Joe, or she loses this fight. And 
Sue's trying to play with her southpaw yeah. stance a little bit. Try to change something up. Maybe throw a left kick or a left straight from here. Van Seuss has actually been more active. But the strike statistics right now stand at 67 apiece, Joe. <laughs> it's same thing as the first fight. I mean, really tough back and forth. The two best women in the world. That's what you're going to get. Look at the judges' cards, and it looks like just all one-way traffic. But indeed, it is almost 50-50 everything. A little bit of a wardrobe malfunction here for Maxson. We'll get that fixed. Nice to have your husband in the corner yeah, when that happens, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> that was Benoit. One of the advantages. Benoit Mateau. Good high kick from Mexico. Body kick there for Tiffany. And another one. The high kick. You can see a lot of similarities between the two. I'm sure we're going to see them fight again in the future as well. It's that close between. Minute to go here in round four. Nice switch, jumping front kick there for Tiffany Van Seuss. So, Will the judges reward her activity here in the fourth round? Right hand kind of got Mexican off center. Good heated battle here between two of the world's best. Yeah, this is a good fourth round. Mexican's starting to use her straight attacks to keep Van Seuss away, or try anyways. But Van Seuss staying in her grill. Well, Van Seuss needs a knockdown, and she's trying to get it. Yeah, she's trying, especially with that spinning back fist. But Exxon keeps chopping away, now going to the legs. And that'll do it for round four. Will the judges finally give the American a round? Show the world your heart. That was the message from Tiffany Van Seuss Corner. I think she's already shown the world her heart. Yeah. But now more than ever, She's got to lay it all out there. This is a world title on the line. This is your life, what you dreamed of. A uh, right hand connects. Two judges gave the American round four, three, give it to Mexico. Oh. One judge has it even, the other four to the French fighter. Statistics about as even as they can come, folks. Fifth and final round, 2.30 to go. Does Van Seuss have the power, the timing, to put Mexen down? Nice body kick there from Van Seuss. An overhand left connected there from Mexen. I mentioned earlier that Van Seuss in fantastic physical condition. She's proving it now, going right after Mexen as she's done for the first four rounds. Yeah, and she keeps coming forward. Mexen's now being a little bit more patient, trying to circle out. Probably knowing that the judges have it going her way. Van Su's corner saying, don't wait on her. Mexican now is content with moving and taking the decision. Oh, there's a back fist that connects, followed by a left hand for Van Seuss. Yeah, but Tiffany's here to scrap. Go, go, go. Go. A glance up at the clock by Anissa Mexican. Just over a minute to go here in the fifth and final round. The left connects. One minute left. Fight. They 
exchange low kicks. Mexen still bouncing on her toes. Give her credit, she's done enough to win according to the judges so far. And Sue's continuing to pressure, found her right hand. Good fight either way. Crazy amount of output. They have combined to throw over 500 strikes. That's over 100 around, ladies and gentlemen. 10 seconds left. A fantastic battle between the world's finest, Tiffany Van Soos and Anissa Maxson here in France. So we jump into our highlights in every round, Joe. The strikes were almost exactly the same. Yeah, it was the same thing as their first fight, and we saw a lot of good back and forth, both having their moments, but Mexen kept pushing forward. As the fight went on, Van Soos knew she needed to do more, so she continued to pressure, come forward, but if you look at the, the, the scores of the fights, Mexen landed one more strike, 129 to the 128 of Van Soos. But you know, there was a lot on the line for Tiffany Van Soos to continue pressuring forward, but you see how good Anissa Mexen is trying to keep Van Soos away from her, use her distance, stay away, and score the best she can. But I'm sure they'll see each other once again. They score this bout 48-47 Van Soost. 49-46 Mexen. And our three remaining judges all score the bout 50-45 for your winner by split decision. And still glory super bantamweight champion of the world. Once again, the fight went to the judges' scorecards, leaving the title in the hands of the best female kickboxer in the world, Anissa Mexen. When we come back, it's an all-out war when the former and current welterweight champions, Cedric Dumbe and Haruk Gregorian, step in the ring for one of Glory's most unique title fights of all time. You're watching Glory 64 Rewind. Welcome back to Rewind. Glory 64's main event featured the current welterweight champion, Haruk Gregorian, defending against the former champion, Cedric Dumbe, in what would become one of the most unique moments in Glory history. Interesting that in the weigh-in yesterday, Haruk wouldn't look at Cedric. Tonight, during the stare down, Cedric wouldn't look at Haruk. Yep, Haruk's ready, he's got his eyes ready. Here we go, the welterweight championship of the world up for grabs. Haruk Gregorian in the white gloves, Cedric Dumbe in the black. The big question with Haruk Gregorian was, could he go five rounds if he needed to? And in his first title defense against Alim Naviev, he showed that he could. He was able to control his power and patient, and then unload when he needs to. This fight was supposed to take place at Glory 60 Lyon, but because of the stomach flu, Harut had to pull out. Dumbe felt that Harut was simply scared. I don't think it's possible for Harut to be scared. It's the highest level of fighting. Harut trying to back Cedric into the corner. Cedric is very aware of the power that Harut possesses. There's the ring control from Gregorian. Staying right in front of Dumbe. Trying to keep his back against the ropes. We saw when Harut fought Myrtle Grunhart. One landed shot, no matter where it is on the head, can end the contest. See, this is the Dumbe we saw against Nikki Holtzkin. A little bit more movement, switching stances. Attacking on angles now. And we saw in the fight prior to this, these French judges seem to at least favor a French fighter when things are even. You can just see how slick Dumbe is with his movement. Dumbe with the low kick. 
He's not stopped moving, has he, Joe? No, he has to keep moving. I know he talked about wanting to sit it in the pocket and throw, but this is his best strategy. A good strategy for Gregorian would be to take the legs. Because you notice every time Haru punches, Dumbe moves his head back. The head might move, but the legs are stationary. That's why you gotta hit the legs of the body against a fighter who moves their head a lot. When Dumbe's on, his movement is nearly untouchable. Just ask Johan Congolo, who basically put his hands up in the air as the fight was winding down. Like, what else can I do? I can't hit him. Nikki Holskin, the same thing. Fight! Ten seconds to go. It's a fairly even round statistically. Yep, it's very close. Dean Bay is really good fighting off and going backwards. So that's what makes this really tough to score. Fight! Round two, we are scheduled for five. We'll see the official scores here from our ringside judges. There's five of them, and all five give it to Dumbe. Judge, I don't want to, or Joe, I don't want to question their integrity, but this is exactly what we saw in our yeah. last fight. If the round is very close, they'll give it to the French fight. Yeah, and it's that's where Gregorian really needs to put forth a little bit more output. Fight! He can't just be chasing and following and using his ring control. He's got to put some offense. And yes, it is close. You can see there. Similar landed strikes, but it was Gregorian who threw 11 more. And low kick. Left hand there for Dubé, and then a, a low kick as well, and Harut may be off balance, or it could be hurt. I think, oh, he's firing right back. Now we got a fighter fight. Was that a knockdown? No, says Paul Nichols. Right back out of the fire goes Dubé. Oh, oh he's a left hand. Has just Neutral. put the champ down. Harut is Three. dazed. Four, five, Dubé beating him at his own medicine right now. Seven. We I question his ability to fight. sit in the pocket and throw. And yes, the answer, Todd, yes, he can stay in the pocket and throw. And a big knee from Dupe. He wants the knockout finish here in the second round. He's got to be careful, though. Yeah, Dupe did throw some uppercuts. It's, he landed. Landed a left hook. But Haru keeps throwing. Wild stuff here in France. Crazy second round. Oh, and it's got him again. Haru does not look all there right now. But he's still finding a way to throw back. Look at Dubé, leaving it all on. Big uppercut. Paul Nichols may jump in there in a second. Oh, he's turned his back. And it's another knockdown for Dubé. It was called a knockdown. And Dubé thought he won. He thinks the fight's over. It's not over. Gregorian even One. spit out his mouthpiece. Two, three, I hate to say this, Joe, four, but what an idiot. What is Dubé doing? Six. I have seven, no clue. Eight. Gloves up. He Four. gave Haroon about 25 seconds. And his mouth guard's out. This is insanity. Dubé may have just wasted a title win there. Go. And now they'll fight again. Has Haroon regained his faculties? Oh, and a left hook connects, and another left hand, and that's it! Dubé with the exclamation point! We've got a new world champion! And Cedric Dubé is once again officially the best! Three knockdowns and all, here's the first, Joe. Yeah, you saw that overhand right really rocked. Haru put him backwards, and then he landed another right hand. You can see in the eyes that Haru was, was rocked there. The second knockdown, Dubé, Dubé slips the punch, comes back with his own. But that uppercut just between the defense as Harut was shelled up. You can't stay shelled up against the best. 
because he's going to find his shots, hit the body, hit the uppercut, and then finally found that right hand, left hook, which put Gregoria back to the canvas. We thought it was over. He gets out of the ring. Got too excited here. <laughs> Where was he going, by the we way? We had everybody in the crowd even yelling at him to go back. And then he got back into the ring. Came back. Oh, found that counter left hook. Found it again. Paul Nichols saw enough. And we have a new welterweight champion in Cedric Dubé. With an official time of two minutes, 59 seconds, declaring your winner by technical knockout. And new glory welterweight champion of the world, Cedric Dumbe. Between the non-stop combinations and the mid-fight celebration outside the ring, Dumbe proved there are few other fighters that can compete with him. With one of the most dominant performances we have ever seen Cedric deliver, he walked away once again as the best by reclaiming his belt. We'll have to wait and see what comes next for the two French champions that were crowned at Glory 64. But don't forget to check out all things Glory on our website, glorykickboxing.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as catch up on Glory features and fights on our YouTube channel. We'll see you next time on Glory Rewind.